This video is aimed mainly at Cry Engine 451. This village idiot emailed me telling me about how I'm going to find out soon enough how real hell is and you know the world's full of demons and you know end times are coming all this kind of weird bullshit that the delusionists usually speak about. Uh, but what I'd like people to know is that you know if you're a theist and you feel like getting into an argument with an atheist or even a, a theist with an education to try to convince him or argue the point that the Big Bang is not real because something comes from can't come from nothing maybe you'll remember this video and avoid that argument so you won't look like a fool The main argument I get from delusionists is that something can't come from nothing. In that argument, they often use the interpretation of the Big Bang Theory that the planets, stars, nebula, and black holes were created by the event itself. This ludicrous interpretation can only come from a fundamental lack of education. It's the cosmological equivalent of creationists saying evolution means we came from monkeys, an argument used by the likes of Venom Fang X and inbred hillbillies. Of course, when faced with the response that God would then have to be created, they enter the common realm of intellectual dishonesty by giving their imaginary sky gnome a mulligan on the law that they just made up. When presented with that level of ignorance, it's easy to see how a delusionist can be so adamant about his refusal to accept the Big Bang. When we speak about the Big Bang event, we are talking about the expansion of space and time from a point of infinite density, a fraction of the size of an atom known as a singularity. This singularity was outside the laws of physics as the universe did not yet exist. There wasn't an explosion as depicted in numerous animations, but rather just a rapid expansion of the singularity. The singularity did not contain stars and planets, it contained energy and was infinitely hot. And how do we know all this? Our little friend here. Energy equals mass times the speed of light squared. Einstein showed us with his, with his equation that energy and mass are two types of the same thing. They're interchangeable. Energy is mass and mass is energy. When the expansion began, the heat immediately began to cool and the laws of physics took over. The universe was born. not from the singularity, but inside it. Everything you see when you gaze at the sky or through a telescope is inside that singularity. When you see an animation of the Big Bang, such as this, it's misinterpreted by many to be in real time. This, of course, is not the case. This animation covers 13 billion years. A fraction of a second after the initial Big Bang, the energy began to convert to matter in the form of atomic elements, the most abundant being hydrogen. Over billions of years, the hydrogen coalesced into clouds drawn by gravity. These swirling clouds of gas condensed and formed stars. At this point, there were still no planets. As stars burned, the thermonuclear fusion process created helium. When the hydrogen supply ran out, the star then fused the helium, creating carbon. Other elements were also created in the death thralls of the dying stars. Eventually, the stars exploded, scattering these elements into space. This debris is what formed the planets and us. This process is continuing today. So when you see iron, realize that iron used to be in the core of a massive star that went supernova. In fact, everything we see in our world came from exploding stars. As we see, the universe is not a case of something from nothing. It's the result of a process that has been tested, verified, and well understood. The only people that have to explain how something came from nothing are theists. Now finally I'd like to readdress CryEngine 451. See, in one of his mails to me, he said that his proof of God was that we don't know what caused the Big Bang. And I, of course, replied to him saying that just because we don't know something doesn't mean God did it. 
Now normally what I would expect is your typical straw man response from a theist. But instead, I actually got his, his return said, yes it does. He actually said that if we don't know what causes something, it means God did it. Now most of you out there realize how ridiculous that statement is. But just for CryEngine 451, I would like to point out that 60 years ago, we did not have a clue what caused the Aurora Borealis. Did that mean that God did it? Well, I'm sure there were fools like you running around saying that. We don't know what's doing it, so it must be a sign from God. It's God's message to us that he's still here. But you see, in 1957, we discovered that it was charged particles riding on solar winds that was striking our atmosphere that caused the Aurora Borealis. It had nothing to do with God. And God has nothing to do with the Big Bang.